Namaste and welcome to Kalayatra season two. We are meeting with some high caliber performing artists from India who have dedicated their lives completely to performing and teaching traditional Indian arts. The idea is to understand the struggles and compromises involved behind each successful artist and to keep the conversation educational, inspirational, and realistic. Today, we have a very successful, accomplished, and a world-famous Bharatanatyam dancer, Rama Vaidyanathan. Rama Vaidyanathan trained intensively under the legendary Yamini Krishnamurti and the celebrated guru, Saroja Vaidyanathan. In a career spanning over three decades, Rama, with her unique style, embellished with her individuality, without compromising the core pillars of Bharatanatyam, has added many fresh dance compositions and interpretations to the Bharatanatyam repertoire. She's a highly sought after performer in many prestigious organizations and is the recipient of numerous awards, which include Kalaimamani from the government of Tamil Nadu, Kalashri from government of Kerala, Sangeet and Natak Academy Puraskar from the Central Government of India, Kumar Gandharva Puraskar from Government of Madhya Pradesh, Nritya Chudamani from Krishnagana Sabha Chennai, to name a few. Rama is the founder director of Ganesh Natyalaya, and for more than two decades, she has been actively teaching younger generations and has been conducting master classes and workshops to aspiring dancers and dance schools all around the world. Rama has been actively taking Bharatanatyam to new heights through her universal consciousness, thus creating soulful interpretations of this classical art form. Please welcome the amazing Rama Vaidyanathan. Namaste Rama, welcome to Kala Yatra. Thank you Aparna, thank you for having me, inviting me to this beautiful journey that you have embarked upon. Oh, thank you, it's our pleasure and I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here with us for this. Uh, this is season two, so in season two, we are interviewing um, uh, performing artists who have been in this journey for you know a long time. And you would have seen the ups and downs and, you know, we want to give a realistic picture of the journey so that young aspiring, you know, our, uh, dancers and musicians can actually understand how to go about planning their career. So how has COVID changed? How are things during these times? I actually, Aparna, really enjoyed uh, this whole period. Because, you know, one was so busy with rehearsals and travel and program and one after the other. So there right. was a lot of me time that I got with my own dance. Right. And then, you know, to go to your studio just to dance with no agenda. Right. And with no, uh, you know, tight schedule that, you know, you have to finish this, you have to do that. Right. So it was like, you know, being with a lover in an island far away, away from the maddening crowd so that is the kind of feeling I got with with uh, dance so I was able to revive a lot of old compositions oh. uh, that I learned uh, from Guru Yamini Amma I was able to revive all of those compositions I was able to do a lot of teaching hmm. teaching my students very regularly hmm. and most importantly I was able to spend a lot of time at home with family and do cooking because right. I love cooking it's my passion Right, right. Yeah, totally. So I, yeah, so I really enjoyed it, actually. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, this is, this is something, you know, that uh, was waiting for us. And, uh, you know, especially artists, right, who just keep giving and giving and giving. So there is a moment you need to pause and first take what you have in life, right? So, yeah, I totally agree with you. So how have your concerts and your uh, classes changed because of the situation? Uh, most of them have become digital. Right. And I have actually done very, very few digital performances. Okay. Uh, 
a very, very selective I have been. Mm -hmm. So classes have become more because they know there is more time. Right. But performances have reduced. And actually, even the digital performances have reduced. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually happy with it because, you know, like you said, we need this cooling down period. At right. least I needed it very badly. Right. Right. Because yeah. I was literally living out of suitcases for 25 years. <laughs> I can only imagine, oh my God. Yeah, that must have been like some crazy uh, experience, right? Yeah. Um, so when, when people look at you, you know, beauty, talent, intelligence, everything has worked in favor of you. But it doesn't stop there, right? There is something beyond that, that uh, people don't get to see on stage. So I would like to talk about the things that happen behind the stage, behind the screen, so that people get a realistic idea of what are the struggles and compromises involved in this journey. Because it is very easy to look at somebody's success and want their results, but we need to understand what has gone into it to actually aspire to become like somebody, right? So everybody wants to become Rama Vaidyanathan, and I'm sure they are intimidated with the, with, the, with the very thought of it, because you're just such an amazing dancer. You have had such a long journey. So I want younger students and artists to have a better idea as to what this involves. So my first question for you would be, what are the prerequisites for a full-time performer? I think uh, definitely one of the most important prerequisites is a very sound training. Hmm. And years and years of immersion in the, uh, in the training period and not trying to become a performer after just five, six years of training. Right. right. You know, I always say first 10 years, it is just learning. Second 10 years is just assimilating and internalizing. So it's literally only after 20 years that you're actually ready to perform, perform and take it up as a performing career. Right. That's one thing. Secondly, what I call Asura Sadhana. Hmm. You know, that kind of surrender and dedication. And why dance? Anything in this world you take, if you want excellence, if you want to reach great heights, you need to work for it. Right. Nothing, nothing is going to fall on your lap. Right. You have to work for it. And the third most important thing I feel is patience. Mm -hmm. Not to be in a hurry to get results. Right. Because what we do is in the hurry to get results, we tend to do things differently and take shortcuts. Right. So right. it is important to have patience and uh, belief in yourself. If you know, if you have not got the right opportunities, wait. Mm. Work on your dance. Work on yourself. Right. You know, work towards your attitude towards your dance. That is so important. I feel the attitude towards your art is crucial. I always yes. say that you know, we are the small and art is the big. The yes. minute we think that we are the big, we are bigger than the art. That, that's finished for us. Yeah, thank you so for that, saying that. Yes, yes, it's, it's very important to keep it? the focus on the art, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that complete surrender to the art. Mm. That is important. And the last thing, yes, the most important thing is sustaining it. Right. You know, you can't be a meteor, just go up and then burn right. out. Right. You very know, true. and especially very Indian arts, Indian arts, the thing marinates, marinates beautifully and the beauty of it comes out. Look at Vaijanti Malaka, you right. know, in her 80s, she is uh, performing and similarly, so many musicians, Tian Krishnan Mama, you know, yeah. in, in look at the way he plays. So right. I feel that kind of sustenance of the art right. Right. and not letting go and getting disillusioned in the middle and feeling, oh, I've done everything, now I can, you know, just relax. No. Right. right. Very true. Yeah, these are very, very important points that uh, youngsters to, you know, they have to understand these before they actually 
take it up seriously because it's very easy to feel lost very soon because it is a very competitive world out there. And uh, if you keep the focus on the art and not yourself, uh, I don't think you'll see any competition out there, right? So that's Yeah, you know, I all yes, Aparna, you're right. I always say that we should compete with ourselves. Right. Our own selves and not compete with the outside world. Right. Exactly. Yes. So um, when you perform, so I'm, I'm sure there are many distractions. You know, you are thinking about your personal life. You're thinking about your family. You're thinking about your, you know, the audience. And so how do you focus completely on just your performance in any program? Yes, that focus has to be um, nurtured. So it's like meditation. It's like the mind, body, and soul are getting aligned with each other. And that again will come from sadhana. And also it will come from the fact that you do not give too much importance to your body. And basically it's not... You have, to look, you have to look at it this way, that the body is just a medium to, to showcase the dance. Right. Okay? And what is actually dancing is your soul inside you. So I think we have to delink ourselves from the body, which right. is why as a woman, I'm able to do Shiva Tandavam and a male, as a male, can do Radha's yearning for Krishna. How are we able to do that? Because we need to delink ourselves from the body, and it is actually the mind, the inner soul that is expressing. So, that kind of focus is what we have to uh, 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 endeavor to develop. It, it won't happen overnight, and it is never 100%. I mean, everybody is working towards it, all right. of us are working towards it. Right. But I, but understanding the idea is important. Yeah, thank thank you for yes. saying that. Yeah, that's that's a very yes. important point. Yeah, yes. uh, you know you don't see a separation between the art and yourself. You see the unison. So that kind of focus, you know, happens eventually, right? I mean, rather we should aim for it. Would would you say that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Unless if you know what to, what what is there, what you have to uh, endeavor for, what you have to aim for then half the battle is won. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's important. What have been your uh, struggles because of, uh, you know, uh, being a full-time performer? Uh, struggles would be, you know, every young dancer, uh, you know, looks for those opportunities. Some opportunities come by, some don't. Right. And then I said, you have to be patient. And as you know, I am from Delhi. From Delhi to go to Chennai and then to be recognized was a very long path for me. Right. I have danced in sabhas with five people sitting in the audience. Right. And that slowly, slowly, like I said, you know, belief in yourself, belief in the art, sustaining it holding on to it, not losing hope and going on and on. And th that, so the struggle was to hang on there. Right. You know, not to right. lose hope. Not to lose hope. Not, yeah. to, not to feel sad with one bad review or not yeah. to f get disillusioned when you don't see audience, uh, you, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in an auditorium or, you know, things like that or get upset when, um, your peers are performing in a festival and you are not. Right. These are all, you know, this is all part of life. And uh, it is ultimately that you have to go home to your art. Right. It is the art which is going to uh, give you the solace. Right. And help you and overcome these challenges. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Uh, what are your compromises in professional and personal life okay so you know the word compromise uh, when do we use it we use the word compromise when uh, we have lost something mm -hmm. we know we, we we either lose our dignity or we lose our money 
or we lose uh, love in our lives you know something right. some that is the meaning of compromise but if i have taken a made a choice mm. for example not to be there for my daughter's parent teacher meeting and instead be in bangalore for a performance i have made a choice i yes. cannot call it compromise nobody put a gun on my head and said you have to do this program right. so i have made the choice and i better go by it and not feel guilty about it and work towards it with the strength of conviction another example what if i say no to a program just because i have to be there for my daughter during her final exams right. all these are all these are things that i've done that's why i'm saying right. it right and what if i say no to a program i will not call that a compromise hmm. because i have taken the decision to be with my daughter for her exam so i would say these are choices hmm. that you make and you stick by them not feel bad about them whichever way you go right and move on with life and make a balance right and make yeah. a balance of both balance yeah. is very important i he always did. say nataraja see nataraja stands on one leg he's constantly telling us dance is about balance right. right and especially you know married and kids like you and me we need to make that balance right you know between right. personal and professional life yes so you very rightly put it it is all about choices and when you have made the choice it definitely is a conscious choice right you are consciously making a choice and once you have made the choice we shouldn't go back thinking oh i have missed out on that because we did have the control to do it other way so basically we can't we cannot have it all so we need to let go of certain things to get certain things and that i think that is missing um in the younger generation because they aspire for everything they just want everything because they look at things differently and they think it's easy to get say they they just put their hand in everything that they see so i see that they get confused quite a bit and without understanding that it is a choice that comes from you and you need to let go of certain things it it really wouldn't work right so it wouldn't go anywhere so that's a very well put answer i'm i'm very happy thank you so much so when you mentioned about the opportunities um it is a struggle because there are just you know a lot of dancers lot of musicians who are good as well so there is a competition for the opportunity to you know gain experience through that opportunity and also express so what have been your struggles because when i read your um, you know uh, introduction i was just you know amazed i i just couldn't read the entire list of awards you have received from you know all over india and all over the world i just mentioned a few i'm sorry but uh, looking at that i know you have traveled so much and you have you know um explored so much so definitely you know we would like to know what have been the struggles behind it and how is it that you went about it and uh, how have you been able to sustain it this long so you know we artists we have to face the fact we have to face the fact that it is a product that we are selling like you know a designer sells clothes right a, a carpenter sells furniture and let us face the fact that we artists we sell our art whether it is a painting or whether it is a uh, music or whether it is dance so it's a product that we have and we need to sell it right now we need to understand that there is a dignity in, involved in this hmm. and we have to do it in a particular dignified manner and like i said take the long and difficult path and not the short and easy path because right. the short and easy path will take you there but you will not be able to sustain that right right so you have to be extremely patient and you have to uh, you know make sure that your art speaks for itself hmm your art has to speak and i think in this is something i've 
always told, you know, the youngsters, it is very important for youngsters now to have a network among themselves. Mm. And, and let them, you know, we should all move forward together. If right. we move forward together, we will go further. Mm. If only one person gets all the opportunities, that's it. It will finish at one, at one point. Right. So right. I, am, I always urge youngsters to have a network. If you have gone for a festival, then recommend your friend for that festival. Right. And then, you know, do this networking so that right. everybody is aware of whom to, in, whom to contact for the festival, you know, how to contact for any performance. Or, and there has to be unity amongst the artists. Right. If that is done, the arts presenters will understand that, you know, there is a unity amongst them. And then, you know, we cannot mess around. Right. You know, we can, we can choose, of course, excellence, that's a given. You have to be, you know, at a level of excellence. And then you do this networking amongst yourselves rather than doing networking with the arts presenters. Right. Right. It's very important, I feel. Artists have to network to right. get opportunities for each other. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. I think people really miss that because there is always this rush to, you know, um, just, you know, project yourself. And uh, when you are more of a giver, definitely you will start thinking about your peers as well as your, you know, friends from other schools. So I definitely, you know, agree with you. That's a very important point that uh, youngsters should think about. And uh, that unity among artists really, really is very important. Thank you for saying that, Rama. Yeah, it really, it really definitely helps uh, children understand it better. Rama, I would like to actually know about the Manodharma aspect involved in Bharatanatyam. Because when it comes to um, Carnatic music or even Hindustani music, you know, people have this scope of spontaneous improvisation, right? The Manodharma. When it comes to Bharatanatyam or any kind of dance, people always have this idea that everything is preset, everything is pre choreographed. They're just doing what they have re rehearsed. So, how would you say that the aspect of Manodharma is involved in Bharatanatyam? So, first of all, for a dancer to engage in Manodharma and engage in spontaneous uh, expression of the emotion, of course, the given thing is that the training has to be sound and years of years, strength of training has to be there. And many times, a lot of people have asked me that, you know, Bharatanatyam is so codified yeah. and it is so structured with such strict boundaries. Mm. How do you do Manodharma? How do you innovate? How do you create? Right. You know, it is so difficult to be within the boundaries. And I always say that actually the structure and the codification and the boundaries or whatever you may call it doesn't restrict me. It actually liberates me. Mm. So you have to get into that state of mind of liberation, of freedom. Right. And, and, and then address the issue of Manodharma. So it is not something that has, that can be, fed into you. It is something that will come out of a state of mind that you are in. And that state of mind is this complete surrender and this complete liberation and literally flying with your art. And that is when you get into the spontaneity of, the, of dance. And for that, definitely, you need a very, very solid singer to back you up. Like for example, when Sudhara Guraman sings for me, there is this manodharma that we do. Mm. That is because she understands the dance and I understand what she's singing. Right. And that, 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 that coming together of music and dance is very, very important. It so is. that sense of liberation has to be there. What am I going to do? No, 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 no. You have to surrender. You have to be liberated. 
true. And so and I think the and the other reason and 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 the other thing that can can inspire manodharma is a sense of novelty that you bring to your own dance. Hmm. There are so many dances, Aparna. Right. But how is it that some dancers are doing the same thing, but there is something different about them? Right. And so that that kind of novelty, that kind of a, 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 I won't use the word new, but I would use the word creative dealing with the poetry, creative dealing with a fresh approach right to the poetry and to the usage of the adavus and the abhinaya and the music uh, i think that has to be you it has mm. to be very um, individualistic mm. and only then will there be an interest that you will uh, generate an interest oh let's go and watch that dancer there's something different that she's uh trying to do and you can do something different with the typical shabdam and the typical kshetriya padam and the typical tanjore quartet you don't have mm. to do go to african drums and and uh, symphony music right. to do something different you right. can do different being within uh, the parameters which is why i say it should liberate you and not restrict you but you have to get into that that frame of mind first very interesting very interesting and very uh this answer itself is a very fresh approach and a fresh thought thank you so much for sharing rama thank you in um, in i do know about your gurus and i have you know had the pleasure of knowing them through some of my family members uh, kale mamani shri os arun my uncle and then uh, sangeet natak academy awardi um uh, you are puraskar awardi uh, shrimati sudha raguraman i have come to know a lot about your gurus but i would like to know uh, about your other role models that you have had other than your gurus you know um, i have a lot of role models you know starting from you know dhananjayan sir vaidhanti malaka chandrashekar sir sudharani akka chitra akka padu akka and then of course malavika akka and valli akka mm. and the singular thing that i admire about all of them is their power to sustain mm. they all started at the age of 6 or 5 or 6 even leela samsan akka you know they all started young and look even now they are sharing their art and right. even now they are performing and even now they are creating right so i really admire that diligence mm. and that power to sustain i think that is very very essential so right. i really look up to them for that very nice thank you thank you for sharing that uh what have been the advantages of being a full time performer in the role of teaching Oh yes i think it is very important to teach because i think you learn when you teach right you learn so much when you teach and you create a very beautiful community around right. you right you know and that whole thing of of sharing and that relationship between the teacher and the student i think it's very very beautiful it is yes and as an artist grows older let me tell you it is this community that will hold you and uh, make you uh, uh, strong and carry on with your artistic um, activities because right. let us face it after a few years performance career is going to go down that is right. okay we all have to we we all have to face it right right but then it is it is this whole teaching experience and the community that you develop and this whole sharing and choreographing with your students i think it's very very beautiful so right. uh, i don't think that uh, it is two separate entities you know mm -hmm. sometimes a performer says oh my 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 time will go away if i teach and right. sometimes the teacher says oh i'm only teaching i don't have time for performance I think that's not correct. I think we can allocate time for both. I totally agree with you. Yes, I I would say that you know uh, 
teaching actually helps you explore more in your performance performance and through the experience of performing you can actually bring it back to teaching so it goes hand in hand and uh, so how have how have you been able to inspire your students by doing both how how have you been able to um i mean what aspects do you highlight to your students about balancing both of these okay one of the most important things that i teach my students is time management mm. it is very important to manage your time and not to you know waste your time on phone and social media and all of that so there mm. has to be you know because the youngsters these days you know it it's not even their fault it is right there in front of their faces in their in front of them you know so right. they get lured into it right you know so it is very important to have this kind of time management because only then can you uh, balance both right and then the other thing which i which i inculcate in my students is to bring beauty in every aspect of life because art is not just going on to the stage and doing art and coming away right art has to be a way of life dance mm-hmm. has to be a way of life so i teach them to be sensitive to everything aesthetic and beautiful around them to listen to music to read poetry to look at paintings to look at sculpture you know there are so many things to look at the rain falling and how is the rain falling how is the tree moving in the rain how is that little bird chirping how is that meenakshi uh, goddess uh, vigram how is it how beautifully that hip is shaped and how can i stand like that even when you go to a temple you're looking at it so you need to be alert in your life and even right. even a beautiful sari oh what a beautiful sari what are those little motifs in the sari how can i express those motifs through my art so listening to music i think listening to music is so important for a dancer and being part of the whole system of music is very very crucial especially right. if you want to create especially right. if you want to choreograph right so, so this is what i teach my students okay so do you also encourage your uh, students to um learn uh, vocal music oh yes of course okay. yes i teach <laughs> them i keep sending them i keep sending them things you know this you can watch you can read this you can listen to this you can uh, you know things like this i do i also do quizzes with them so oh, nice <laughs> very nice so it, it it used to be mandatory to learn vocal music for a dancer and you know i also heard the other way that musicians also used to learn to dance so that they could express better so uh, i have been very passionate about both dance and music and i watch videos of both dance and music all the time so uh, it i i don't see a separation between the two so they are like just you know woven mm-hmm. together all the time so um what are your most cherished memories with your uh, gurus oh with my gurus um you know when i was so i was very young when i started learning i was 6 years old and the other four or five girls in my class had already learned something some from some other dance class so after a year of adavus when she started alaripo when yamini amma started alaripo i didn't uh, know it those girls knew it and she just started reciting and she said oh ungalku la theriyuma okay you ta tai tai am ta tam she started saying and all these girls started doing and i felt very bad because i was the one who would always be standing in front and i would be under her nose all the time i always wanted to be you know like in her vision she should look at me only very selfish i was <laughs> <laughs> so then i got i got very upset and i started crying and slowly i moved away to the back of the classroom then she called me ayyo papa adar singa va inga va she called me and she put me on her lap and she said nee kavala padade i will teach you myself nee kavala padade and that day she taught me after everybody left she taught me so sweet uh, alaripo <laughs> yes and uh, with amma saroja amma who is my mother in law also right 
what happened was when uh, she when i was about to get married to her son and uh, so they are um, ayer family from tanjavur and i am a nayar family from kerala so and this is we are talking 32 years ago mm-hmm. so a lot of people came up to her and she said oh my god you, your son is not marrying within the community he is marrying outside the community how did you allow it i mean he's she i mean they used the word caste and they said she is not of your caste so my mother in law turned around and she said who said she is not of my caste she is a dancer i am a dancer we both are the same caste oh that's it that sealed my relationship sealed the deal with my <laughs> guru and sealed the deal with my guru and my mother in law so and that is how it has been all these years oh that's that's very nice thank you for sharing i know you recently had your uh, anniversary belated which is for thank your you. uh, wedding anniversary 32 years wow wonderful <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, what would be your most important message to young aspiring artists dancers musicians most inspiring most message. important important yeah in anything from you is inspiring uh what would you consider to be the most important message other than time management yeah <laughs> i think it would be to be to see beauty everywhere around you and to be sensitive to the world around you Very even true. you know the pandemic is happening no we so just because we are not doctors or uh, uh, you know uh, officials who 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 are meant to you know take care of these situations that doesn't mean that we are impervious to what is happening around us right and it is this sensitivity which will actually reflect in our art we have to understand that right. we cannot we cannot turn a blind eye to the world around us very true so we true. and we have to understand that that when we perform we actually represent the world around us i always say that when we dance we represent the universe right. so for that we need to be sensitive to emotions to what is happening around us to anything which is beautiful anything which is emotional it has to touch us and you have to you have to op- you have to have a very very wide vision of life we have to look at life in a very macroscopic manner and not that i am a dancer and this is what i will do not microscopic it has to be very, very can do life in a very very broad manner and we have to look at the larger picture we have to understand we are just like little one speck in that picture and right. the minute we see the, our eyes reflect the big of the universe the big of the art around us automatically our art will thrive automatically our, our creativity will will flow beautifully and it will reflect in our dance very beautiful very 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 beautifully said that is something that every human being should actually you know start doing and more so the artist community yeah very beautifully said thank you for sharing your valuable time with us today and uh, thank you for giving all these inputs and uh, realistic you know idea as to how to go about um, in any field but more so in art forms um we wish you a very 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 long journey a very sustainable journey and a lot more explorative work i know you have um you know become this very unique dancer that everybody looks up to uh, not just dancers even musicians like me so thank you for sharing all of this and uh, stay safe stay healthy hope to see you soon in boston you know some sometime in the near future thank you so much rama thank you thank you thank you so much aparna thank you namaste bye bye yeah namaste